Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Today we're going to review the latest album from a band called the OCs, Floating Coffin. What a cool album title. And what a more even interesting album cover. We talk a lot about mm -hmm. album covers we do. on Velocities in Music, and the reason why is because album title, album cover, track names, these all play into the initial um, conceptions of what we have yeah. of the music. And, and really, uh, the, this album title, you know, has, or album covered has strawberries on it, and then like you look closely, and there's a face under that. It's just the creepiest damn thing ever. When I, seeing that, and, and seeing that, you know, this was getting some praise early on, and then putting up this on and just having this aggressive. How would you describe this sound, oh, Tom? Man. I mean, it's it's latent. I mean, there's just guitars uh -huh. everywhere, and that's obviously I, something I love. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I noticed is there's just a ton of in, uh, influences here. It's, yes, you know, let's it's go through thrashy, that. Thrashy, like thrash <coughs> punk, mm -hmm. uh, garage rock, um, you know, bands that you and I have talked about, the, yeah. the Stooges come yes. to mind, Melvins come to yes. mind, even even like some, you know, I know this band had like folksier roots, but I can even hear like Neil Young influence in there, yeah. even like in the guitar lines and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you know, honestly, there's a, a we, we even talked about like post punk. Yeah, the uh, fall. In, in, yeah, absolutely. There's mm -hmm. just all sorts of influences that they're drawing on. Um, except that these guys do a very good job of making it their own sound. They Would do. you agree? Yes, totally. I mean, I listened to this and I picked up on a lot of the influences you were talking about. Uh, but what was really cool on first listen is you go to the first track, I Come From the Mountain, and it's a very fast rocking track. And it's where you get more of the Iggy Pop style kind of punk vocals. Yeah, totally. But then from there, it moves into to some songs that have more of these like 60s pop harmonies. Yeah. So the juxtaposition of those like pop harmonies with the noise actually reminded me a lot more of like Velvet Underground, yeah, which sure. I just you just hear in everything yeah, these days. Absolutely. You hear them everywhere. Yeah, it's a really but, popular style yeah. right now. Um, but, uh, but so I feel like they're taking a lot of old elements, a lot of that kind of new modern punk indie underground, mm -hmm. and just fusing them together. And they do a great job of making it their own. And another thing that they do a great job of is letting every single aspect of the sound play its part. Yeah. The bass. The bass just owns this album for me as a bass player. They what they do perfectly with the way they set up the songs is allow the 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 bass lines and those just frantic drum beats yeah. to hold down a groove so that the guitars can just kind of be washy and, and well not necessarily washy but gritty and kind of random. Yeah, and, um, and the guitars go everywhere yes, on this album. Absolutely. A lot of times you'll have guitar melodies and in, in like power chords mm -hmm. that are just just going all over the place, and it adds a ton to the mix. It makes it really fun. You know, I know specifically on, on track four, No Spell, yep. that track just knocks me off my feet when I listen to the guitars. Now, I gotta say, the vocals are something that I found... Uh I, I found to really like the mm -hmm. more I listen to this album after I got over just the initial allure of this really dense really raw sound that they have it almost reminded me the sound almost reminded me of Graham Coxon's A plus oh, totally. last yeah. year that we mm -hmm. loved you know where, where it's just that really raw sound very aggressive guitars mm -hmm. a lot of the same um, you know instrumentation and pre yeah. presentation themes are p present on Floating Coffin and you know I, I just couldn't help but get into how they were structuring these songs mm -hmm. I mean these things would go all over the place the vocals had that really high falsetto at times, which I thought was really interesting, because these so songs have a very warm tone to them. It's like rock music you want to listen to on a warm summer day when you're going out like drinking beers and having a barbecue mm -hmm. or something like that, but don't listen to the lyrics, because that would ruin your barbecue. <laughs> the lyrics are just all about death and violence, which it's, it's kind of cool, because the dichotomy of that, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, if you think about the album cover, where you have like the strawberry, something that's, you know, traditionally something that's sweet, mm -hmm. um, um, and, and you know, fruity and happy and yeah. all above, and then you have that that terrifying <laughs> face underneath. Fangs it's and, just yeah. like the sound that they present in this album, where mm -hmm. the sound is warm and inviting, but the lyrics are just terrifying and dark. Um, and, and that's something that dichotomy I always get into. You know, mm -hmm. of Montreal is famous for that, yeah. um, and and that's something that I've always always been a big fan of. This album I found to just knock me off my feet throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I felt like the first. Four tracks, I Come From the Mountains, Toe Cutter, Thumbbuster, oh my god, that Melvin's guitar <laughs> Yeah, this line. is sludgy, nice, Shit. thick. This, the uh, title yeah. track, No Spell, those four tracks mm -hmm. were just a powerhouse. They really the, are. Then they actually had the fortitude to realize, okay, we may be knocking, rocking them too hard. Yeah. Let's slow it down just a little bit. So they actually had Strawberries 1 and 2, which mm -hmm. is a little bit slower. And then they get right back into it. And, I mean, this album is mm -hmm. just really well planned and laid which, out. Which you, you, do, uh, you make a good point in pointing out um, track 5, Strawberries 
Memories 1 and 2 because that is the point where the album slows down a little bit, but yeah. they do it in the middle of the track, Strawberries 1 and 2. Right. Strawberries 1 follows the, the same kind of sound that those first four tracks have, and then they go into something a little slower, yep. a little more grooving. It kind of gets lost in itself mm -hmm. a little bit, then picks it right back up at Maze Vance. Yeah, and the nice thing is is that they almost gave us an interlude to almost a double album, even though this album is, you know, 40 yeah. minutes long uh -huh. and just on the money. So um, it, it's not a 20 minute long ambient track like no. the knife was <laughs> no. to try to divide, which really that's not a, this actually works as a separation yeah. between two parts of an album, which mm -hmm. I love when bands do because it gives some continuity to the two different sides. Mm -hmm. um, now, not to say this is a double album or anything. This album ends in a very particular way. It kind yeah. of it kind of devolves and they and they get a little bit more experimental as it goes on, but yet more simple at the same time. Mm -hmm. Track 10 Minotaur, which I think is a single. Um, they have interesting pick. Yeah, no yeah. kidding, because it actually has violin in it. Who in a, in like a punk influenced, you know, you know, thrash garage band would put violin in a track? That's just crazy to me. And, mm -hmm. and but it, it works. I feel like that yeah. song really has a pretty. And it's number. another track where they bring the tempo down as yeah. well. And and, it, and the the violin works really well because it works more for melody than just drama. Uh, so it it really it, and they have this kind of like kind of offbeat guitar yeah. chords going, and it's a really cool sound overall. Mm -hmm. I just like the way they pulled off that ending. Yeah, I just felt like this was just a solid album throughout. The more I listen to it, the more I pick it apart, the more I'm just like, this is just awesome. It reminds me a lot of um, A plus E that we reviewed mm -hmm. last year. Torch's Harmonicraft even comes yeah, to mind. I, I you know, it's, it's really hard to define an album like this, and actually one of my favorite things um, about rock albums of this magnitude, of this scope, when, when you know you hear all these different influences and the band is willing to be experimental enough, yet um, hone their craft enough that, that you hear all these different styles, yet it's one defined sound. You can't really put a genre box on it, and mm -hmm. I love that. I love when bands don't adhere to just one box Box sound. They're thinking out of the box. They're thinking about their overall sound presentation, and they're giving it to you on an album that just whoops your ass from behind all the way through. Mm -hmm. And I love it. So I'm gonna go 91 on this one. This is a highlight of the year. It's a must listen for me. I'm going 84. I really like it too. So we got an upper 80s album. Yes. That means you guys, if you haven't listened to Floating Coffin, get off your butts and go listen to it. Tell us what you thought at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesofmusic. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and tell us what albums from 2013 you've been into lately and would like to see Tom and I review. We would love to do that for you. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward. Mm -hmm.